the basis of this video today is we're talking about predicting experimental probability. So this is really kind of the most complicated type of experimental probability um, because really you have to look at the data and then you have to make a prediction based on the data. So it's not super difficult, but it just does take a few steps. Remember, experimental probability, I do want to go back to this for just a second. Experimental probability means that you already have data. Okay, the opposite of that would be theoretical. In theoretical, you look at what could happen, what should happen based on the odds, but experimental, you have some data. So I'm gonna draw a line here, um, kind of down the uh, middle of my page, just so I can separate. We're gonna look at the um, experimental probability of a simple event, which is gonna be on the left, and then we'll look at a compound on the right, and both of them we're gonna be making a prediction. So we're gonna go based on what happened, something should or could happen in the future, okay? So this scenario on the left, it says, Talia plays a board game with a friend. She uses a frequency table to record the results. And frequency just means how many times something happened, okay? How many times something happened. So it says that she rolled a one, and this is a frequency table you're using really um, tallies here. So she, they used some tallies, so let's, we'll go ahead and make those into numbers. They rolled a one four times. They rolled a two, two times. A three, that would be six. A four, five times. A five, looks like eight times. And a six, one time. So we don't know how many times she actually rolled total, but we could probably find that. We probably should do that really quickly. Um, let's see, that's gonna make 10. I like to kind of add things together that make 10. So six and four is gonna make 10, two and eight is gonna make 10, and five and one is gonna make six. So that's 26 things, or 26 times total that they rolled um, this number cube, it looks like. So if we're making a prediction, um, a prediction means you use the data you have and you predict how many times it would happen based on your data. So let's make a prediction about how many times they would roll a five out of, let's say, um, 200 trials. So if they were to do this experiment 200 times, based on the data, how many times would they roll a five? So the first thing we have to look at is how many times they actually rolled a five right now. So at this point, they rolled a five eight times out of the 26 total times, and that would be your experimental probability. We just calculated the experimental probability of rolling a five. This is a simple event, right? Only one thing is happening. We didn't roll a number cube and then spin a spinner. We didn't do two different things. We just did one thing. So eight out of, six, eight out of 26 times, that would happen, okay? Um, now what we're going to do is we're looking at predicting if this happened out of 26 times, okay, how many times would it happen, I'm gonna put a question mark, out of 200 times? Okay, so if it happened eight out of 26 times, how many times out of 200? And I'm hoping that something is kind of sparking in your brain. Okay, I'm gonna erase the question mark, and I'm hoping that you think, hey, that's just a proportion box, right? Just two equivalent fractions, it's just a proportion. So what we can do is go ahead and solve for this piece. This is our part. We've been talking about this all year, and this is our whole. So eight out of 26, I'm looking for the part out of 200, so I can cross multiply 26x, and then eight times 200, I believe that would be 1600. And for the sake of saving some time, I'm gonna pull up our little calculator here. So we'll do, to solve this equation, you divide both sides by 26 to get rid of the coefficient. And so I need to do 1600, oops, a little tricky here with the calculator. 1,600 divided by 26. And remember, this was real life data. So as you can tell, 61.5384, not really pretty. So we'll say the five tells the one to go up. And we'll say that this is gonna be approximately, so I'm gonna change my sign there, approximately 62 times, okay? So if it happened eight out of 26 times, then out of 200 times, we just found that it would happen approximately 62 times, okay? 
So again, we found the probability just like we normally would, and then we set up a proportion to figure out how many times out of 200 that it could possibly happen, okay? So let's go ahead and look over here because we are going to have to do this with compound events. Let me get rid of all this junk over here. That way it's not clogging up our screen. And let's kind of look at this experiment over here. So it says, each spinner shown below is divided into equal sections. Felix spins each spinner 30 times. That's probably some important information for us to remember. He records the number of times each section is spun. Okay, so he um, spun this spinner on the left 30 times and he spun the spinner on the right 30 times. Now what these mean is that he spun and it landed on C eight times. It landed on A six times. It landed on D four times, E three times, B four times, and F five times. So that's just giving you the frequency. So just like over here on the left, they just made a frequency table. Over here on the right, they put the frequencies actually on the spinner. So if you look at the spinner on the right, it landed on red seven times, yellow five, blue 10, and green 8, okay? So let's say we want to see if we did this experiment, because they spun the spinner 30 times, let's say if we wanted to spin the spinner 300 times, we want to know maybe what could happen if we did this 300 times. So let's say we want the probability of spinning a B and then landing on red, okay? Spinning a B and then landing on red. Remember, this is compound. We said the other one was simple. This is compound because two things are happening. We're spinning a B and then we're spinning a red. So there's your two things. Two events means two fractions, okay? So we spun a B and that happened four times. And it, in the question right here, it tells us out of 30, okay? And then, the next event is spinning a red. So red happened seven times out of, uh, I believe it was 30. And um, this is a compound probability problem. So top times top and bottom times bottom. So top times top would be 28. And bottom times bottom, 30 times 30 is going to be 900. So this one's actually going to be really interesting. We want to know how many times out of 300. So if it happens 28 times out of 900, we want to know how many times out of 300 did that happen. So this one's a pretty interesting box when we start looking at it that way, okay? So again, it is just a proportion box. You can view it like that. You probably could find a relationship in here as well, but we'll go ahead and do our proportion box. So this would be 900x. Again, probability numbers aren't super friendly sometimes. And then 28 times 300. And again, to save time, we're going to do this on the calculator. So 28 times 300. That's going to be 8,400. And then to solve this, we would divide by 900. And that would, oops, again, calculator's cranky. And it would be about 9.3, so approximately 9.3. So out of 300 trials, okay, if I were to do this 300 times, which is kind of what we said at the top, it would happen approximately 9.3 times, which is what we found down here with our <clears throat> approximation. So approximately 9.3 times we would spin B and then red, okay? If you have a really good handle on simple and compound uh, probability, either experimental or theoretical, if you have a really good handle on that, all you have to do is think about setting up a proportion. So you notice what we did from here, once we got our answer for our proportion or for our probability, okay, we figured out this was 28 out of 900, we just, all we had to do to do the prediction part, because that's the part that we're talking about in this video, the prediction only came from finding out how many times out of 300, okay? This is the only extra step right here. The predicting part, all you have to do is then set up another just piece of your um, proportion and then 
solve it. Cross multiply and solve your equation.